Tickets are on sale now for our 20th anniversary Back to the 80s and 90s WrestleFest Birthday Bash, Saturday, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm New Jack. If you thought we had some good stuff from Episode 1 fans, wait until you see what we have up next on Wrestling Insiders Extreme. Stand by. Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorf. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Inside. It's Dan Marotti with our new friend, New Jack. The, yes, sir. The response to episode one, I, it was not the typical program that we offer. Again, this is one, I guess, maybe of a little more adult variety, but the response was phenomenal. The fans loved your stories about three men that you really you don't really give a fuck about, I guess right. is a good way to put it. Yeah. Abdullah, Tony Atlas, Brian Nobbs, you can check it out in the archives, we had a lot of fun, we had a lot of laughs as he verbally obl obl obliviated the three of them. Uh, but now I want to go back in time a little bit. We catched up with you about what life is like in the world of New Jack in 2020, 2021 with coronavirus, how you've stayed busy. I uh, want to go back in time to what got you interested in the King of Sports professional wrestling. On that Dark Side of the Ring documentary, you described a very... Tough childhood, I guess, is uh, being yeah. a, is a way to sugarcoat it, really. Yeah. Um, you know that no kid should have to go through. You know. I had a buddy. We played semi-pro football in Atlanta. Did you played semi-pro football? Yeah. Okay. And he had been training down at the power plant, but he couldn't afford to pay no more, so they told him to stop coming. So he approached me. And he was like, I've been training, and I can train you, and we can wrestle. And at the time, I was like, man, I don't want to do that shit. How old would you have been around this time? 29. Oh, you were that old when you broke Yeah, I, I broke in the business. I was damn near 30. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, we kept talking about it. So he took me down to this, this little company in Atlanta. I forgot the name of it. And Ray Candy was there. So I got in the ring with Ray. First time. And he was teaching me how to lock it up, do spots, and, and all kind of shit. And I was like, this shit could be kind of fun. Well, my buddy was getting mad at me because Ray liked me but didn't like him. So I was like, I think I want to do it. He quit. But I had met Ray, and I knew who before Ray was. So I was like, well, I'm going to keep doing it. So I kept doing it. A few weeks went by. And then this local company in Atlanta, North Georgia Wrestling Association, Wrestling Allowance, they was running shows on the weekends, and they would come on TV at 4 o'clock in the morning. Wow. What a time slot. <laughs> yeah. So I made a, a video and took it to the guy. His name was Sammy Kent. He's dead now. And he was like, I like it. He said, you need to keep training, but I like it. So then Ray would come down to North Georgia and train me. Along with me working with the guys with that, that, that Sammy had down there, they put me on TV. I'm up at 4 in the morning watching my ass on TV, right? And I was like, 
He was like, just stick with it and we can do something. I worked with him for about six months. USWA. Came back from USWA. Jim Cornette was in town and he was at the hotel and he saw the show. So he called Sammy and asked Sammy to get in touch with me to tell me that he wanted me to do a tryout with Smokey Mountain. Mm -hmm. So at the time, me and Mustafa wasn't tagging. Mustafa was down there as Sheik Mohammed Mustafa, some crazy shit. He was eating raw meat and <laughs> had a face paint. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, I don't want to do that. So Jim Cornette came. He saw us. So he invited us on the next show that Smoky Mountain had in Atlanta. Mm. And that's when we got hired. And Cornette was like, Y'all got a name? I said, I'm New Jack. That's Mustafa. He said, No, do you have a tag team name? I said, No. He said, Well, let's figure out the name. So we started pitching each other names. And I was like, no, nah, I don't like that. And then I pitched one to him, he's like, no, nah, I don't like that. So finally he said, the gangsters. But he said, the gangsters. I was like, change that E-R-S to an A-S. The gangsters. He was like, I like it. Like how we'd say it in Boston, the yeah. gangsters. Yeah. Even if it was E-R-S, we'd say it like that. Yeah. And he was like, I like it. He said, we'll call y'all the gangsters. And that's when we was born. Let's backtrack a little bit, because a lot went on between now and then. When you started your wrestling training, were you still playing semi-pro football at the same no, time? No, that was my last game. Oh, that, you get, that was the end of your football career? Yeah, I was career? done. Okay. I played five years, and I was done. Was there any money in semi-pro football? No. No. It's no. almost like indie wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> $50. Were you a wrestling fan when you were a kid growing up? I used to go, okay, I was born in North Carolina, mm -hmm. Greensboro. But I moved to Atlanta, I'm sorry, to Florida when I was 13. Then I was 15, I moved to Atlanta. So I would go to the show sometimes. And my, my favorite wrestler was Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> was Dusty Rhodes. Well, you and him have something in common. <laughs> you shared a certain fruit together. <laughs> Not the only two that ever had that fine fruit. Yeah. You and Dusty shared the same fruit. <laughs> the fruits of our labor, baby. <laughs> so, and I told him, I told Dusty about it. He was like, get out. I said, I used to wear the elbow pad. <laughs> and the whole nine. And he thought that shit was funny as fuck. And I was like, dude, I'm serious. Stop laughing. I'm serious. And he was like, okay. So I would go and see NWA, Mid Atlantic, in North Carolina. And I would go, not a lot. I will watch it sometimes, not a lot. Mm -hmm. But Dusty became my favorite. So quite naturally, when we started working with ECW and he came through, we connected. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he was like, it was a promo that he did one time. I don't forget what it was now. Somebody had, had him in the claw. And he got color. And I was like, this. Now let me try to get this understanding. He squeezed your head 
until you start bleeding. <laughs> like it was a piece of fruit, yeah. <laughs> And he started laughing. He was like, Jack, that was funny. What? I said, I swear to God it was. I said, he squeezed your head to do about the pop. And he was like, he started laughing. So he went out to the ring and cut that same promo that he did when I was a kid. And we became like that. Really? You became yeah. tight with him? Yeah. Yeah. And he would always ask me, he was like, New Jack, give me some of your videotapes that you couldn't promote. He said, my son, Cody, is one of your biggest fans. Really? Like, Cody was a kid then. Oh, yeah, yeah, during the ECW days? Yeah, yeah he yeah, was yeah. a kid. And I would give him my tapes. And I asked him one day, I said, Doug, you sure these tapes ain't for you? <laughs> he was like, no. I said, you sure? He was like, no, they're not for me. They're for my son. I said, all right. So I gave him, I was just fucking with him. You know what I mean? But I gave him the tapes, and I don't know what he did with them, but he was just like, I was his favorite. And we got along just like that. Interesting question, just to tr try and tie in 2020, 2021 a little. Did you ever hear from Cody Rhodes about doing anything with AEW? No, but I'll tell you what I did one day. And I, I was like, oh, I shouldn't have did that. His wife is black. Yeah. I didn't know that was his wife. Oh. So out on Twitter, I said, Cody Rose got a black girlfriend. I said, I know Dusty is doing cartwheels in his <laughs> grave. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody attacked me. Everybody came on Twitter. New Jack, you ain't shit. And I was like, what? And I didn't know. I, I thought it was his girlfriend. Is his wife. But I never talked to Dusty, but I did talk to some people. And I'll leave it at that. Where they just did that blood and guts match, it would have been a perfect fit. Yeah. I actually mentioned that when we were hyping up that you were coming to the studio, <coughs> um, that his AEW did the blood and guts show on AEW Dynamite. What about the master of blood and guts that is sitting to my uh, right right now? Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, you never know. I like the fact that AEW incorporates the blood. I think it adds a little more realism to it. They did a show one night. And I don't know any of the guys that's working down there, really. But the guy came out and was cutting a promo. And he said, who are you going to go and get? Sandman, New Jack, and he named a couple other people. So all these people started tweeting me. They were like, Jack, you saw that message you on, on AEW? And I was like, no, I didn't see it, but I did. I saw it. Because I, I watched it. Somebody told me to watch it, and I watched oh, it. Oh, they mentioned you on AEW? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even see that. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, they did. They did. Well, it's good that they threw that out there yeah. a little bit. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. keep me alive. Keep it alive, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you know what? I, I, as you mentioned, you know what? You, you're not exactly a spry 25-year-old anymore. But, right. you know, there's still a lot you can add in small doses, I think, to any wrestling product. Yeah. Is into that style and again I like I think blood and moderation is fantastic mm -hmm. I think it makes what you're watching feel more real I think it's part of what's killed a lot of WWE's gimmick matches when they have the big hell in the cell or elimination chamber or those type of shows and you have six guys in there or even six girls unfortunately nowadays and no color right I mean I, one man's opinion but I think it adds much more realism to it. If you can do it safely, I think, why not go for it? To do a cage match and you don't get color, that's fucked up. What's the point? It, it's, it's pointless. Pointless, exactly. And now that the WWE is so women-heavy as far as trying to do it, you know they're not, it would never let that happen right. in 2021. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I just thought, I, I thought of you when that blood and guts... Uh, match came up, but you know, as a kid that went through you know, almost like a Dusty Rhodes promo, tough times, was wrestling maybe was it a little bit of an escape for you from reality when you'd watch it as a kid? Or yeah, 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 I enjoyed watching it. And I think I hate to say it, and hopefully this doesn't come across the wrong way. I think there's a lot of kids when they're in 
tough times, tough situations, abusive situations at home, you know, they can find pro wrestling or even things like comic book heroes. It's a great, yeah. great release for them. Yeah, and I'm sure you've probably heard that before. Yeah. And it must make you feel pretty good. It you does. know, that now that you lived, unfortunately, as a little guy, you had to live that life. But now as an adult, you've been able to, you know, maybe help some kids that needed an outlet to escape mentally what they live with every day, whether it be a situation with a parent or an abusive situation. The world is so crazy right now. There's so many different avenues kids can be hurt and abused in. To be that outlet, to try and, you know, make life a little, give them a chance to have a little fun, some escapism, you know? I was at the Chinese restaurant in Greensboro. And I walked in, and this kid was getting ready to order his food. And we met eye to eye when I walked in the door. He was like, hell no. New Jack! And I was, <laughs> he was like, I'm in college. He said, can I hear you on my podcast? And I thought it was funny. And I told my wife about it. And she started laughing. And he took a picture of me and him and put it on Instagram. And he started keeping in touch with me. So I told him, I said, when I'm back, settle. I'll do your podcast. He was like, dude, please do. He said, I ain't going to let you forget. He said, me and my friends, my college students, he said, my college friends, he said, we are fucking diehard New Jack fans. And he's in his 20s, like 19 or 20. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like. Was this recently? Yeah. Yeah. This was like within the last month. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like I got young fans as well as older fans. And they, they keep up with me. And that's one cool thing about WWE Network. I mean, I don't know what kind of feedback you receive when you do your various appearances and fan fest, but I mean, there's such a great body of your work available to fans at the touch of a button. And the yeah. same thing with YouTube. I mean, anyone with the internet can access YouTube. Yeah. And there's so much New Jack stuff out there from ECW and other places that you've worked on there. Mm -hmm. That must make you feel pretty good that people that weren't even alive you know, when you were having some of these yeah. uh, outstanding brawls, now all of a sudden a huge New Jack fans. Yeah. 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 We did a show, and it was these three little girls walked in. They, they couldn't have been no more than eight or nine. And they all had on New Jack shirts. Really? They had, them, they had the sleeve cut like I cut mine, and they had it cut around the waist the whole nine. And they came in, hold up the eggs. They were kids. Little, little kids like that? Yeah. That they, must have made you feel great. It did. Yeah. It did. <laughs> it sure did. I bet you weren't expecting that. No. I mean, that, you know, college age kids, okay, but an eight or nine year old girl, that must have been kind of funny. Yeah. 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 It just shows the power of what it is we do. Yeah. You know what it is for the frustrations, the stress, the successes, and the happiness that goes along at different points of our wrestling endeavors in our careers, mm -hmm. uh, to have those special moments like that. that I, I tell you, the, my funny one was, uh, I told you about this is the house that the Iron Sheik built, so to speak. Mm -hmm. The craziness that he created, it wound up on the Howard Stern show every day for almost a year and a half. Um, I was in, I, uh, WWE is very kind to us. They set me up with tickets to, it was the big WrestleMania in Dallas that did over 100,000, and I, I couldn't hold it. I had to go to the bathroom. So I was in line waiting to go in. Uh, you know, everybody's chit-chatting, blah, 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 blah. And the guy in front of me says, oh, I know you, I know you, I know you. And I'm like, I hate to, I mean, who the fuck am I? But he finally realized, he goes, you're Dan, because the, from the Sheik video, you're Dan Maloney. Because <laughs> to the Sheik, I was Dan Maloney. To Tony, I was Dan Morella. So neither one of them could say the name right. But he goes, I'm the guy that put the Sheik video on YouTube. Yeah. And I say, get the fuck out of here. And we became buddy-buddy just by happening to walk into the same line at the bathroom at the same time, which right. I always thought was kind of a funny story. Right. But anyway, back to you, your career. That's why people are watching, not my little anecdotes. Did you know who Ray Candy was before you started to train with him? Yeah. Yeah. I knew he was. Were you impressed meeting him in person or? Of course. Yeah. That's Ray Candy, of course. You know what I mean? We, we took the other. He would be like. If you ever have any questions or any problems, call me. So when we get through doing 
the Smoky Mountains, I would drive back to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And I would call Ray sometime at like 2 in the morning. And he might be asleep. But he would wake up and talk to me on the phone for like an hour. And he would always tell me, <laughs> this is from Ray. He said, New Jack, don't let them crackers do to you what they done did to niggas for all these years. And I said, what? He said, if you let them, they'll play you like a goddamn idiot. That's when Tony Atlas name came up. During that conversation? Yes. He said, look at it. Should it? For those fans that may not be familiar with Ray Candy, tell us a little about him and his career and so on, especially here in the Northeast, where I don't believe he ever worked for WWWF. Ray was down in Memphis, Mm -hmm. in USWA. He wrestled with, what's that? Oh, God, that Texas company. World class? Yeah, I think it was them. I think he wrestled with them. But I called him in USWA. Understand something. When I met him, I knew who he was, but I didn't know his complete background. You didn't know his complete I gotcha. You know what I mean? You so, just knew who he was. Yeah. I was like, I'm getting trained by the candy man. <laughs> I sure did. I tell you, the avenues that we take in this uh, crazy profession, but what got you into USWA working for Jerry Jarrett and Jerry Lawler? Jeff Jarrett called Sammy Kent and told him he wanted me to come to USWA. He said, well done, got the belts right now, but they going to WWF. He said, hey, we need a new tag team to drop the belts on. And he said, I saw New Jack work. And I like this work. Well, my partner, his name was Mark Freer. So this wasn't Mustafa? Mm. Okay. This is Mark Freer. But Jerry Jarrett wanted to change his name from Mark Freer. And this is what he said to me. He said, New Jack, we need to think of a name for Mark Frick, for Mark. I said, okay. And and you could tell I was still green as shit to the fucking business. So I said, what about Marky Mark? He said, he started laughing. He said, no. I said, okay, you just your turn. He said, don't y'all call each other homeboy in the hood? I said, dude, I don't live in the hood. I went to college. I said, what the fuck wrong with you? And he said, homeboy. What about homeboy? I said, that's his name. That ain't my name. I said, I don't give a fuck if y'all call him Alfalfa. I said, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I said, that ain't my goddamn name. Mm-hmm. So I talked to Mark that Friday. And I told him we was gonna be tagging. I said, they wanna change your name. He said, what? And he started tossing around all these names at me. I said, no. They wanna call you homeboy. And he was like, what the fuck? I said, bro, that's your name. <laughs> I said, that ain't my name. I said, that's your name. So he was like, homeboy. I was like, yeah. I said, that's what I want to call you. That Saturday morning, we did the TV taping. Jerry Jarrett told me to go out there and talk like we talk in the hood. This, that, those, them, oh, girl. Shit. I said, I don't talk like that. You know what I mean? I said, now you might can find you a black guy that'll do that. I said, but I don't talk like that. He was like, okay. 
Well, what are you going to do? He said, I need you to be from the hood. I said, I can be an educated nigga from the hood. I said, but I'm not going on TV talking like I'm fucking retarded. <laughs> so they wanted me to go out and do a promo. And they put the straps on us that same weekend. We came back in that Saturday and did a did TV taping. And I went and cut a promo. And I did just the opposite of what he wanted me to do. And they got mad at me. And didn't let me cut another promo. Really? And we had the bills. Wrestling fans, I'm getting a cue from the back. I'm very interested in this story. We're going to follow up. Right now, I'm going to take a brief time out. Help us keep the lights on here at MWF Studios here in downtown Melrose, Massachusetts. Back with New Jack and Wrestling Inside is Extreme after this brief timeout. Salute. Tickets are on sale now for our 20th anniversary Back to the 80s and 90s WrestleFest Birthday Bash Saturday, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times. Join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021. Ah, uh, see ya. Why, hello. I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Inside is Extreme, uh, a more adult themed version of our show than you may be accustomed to. If we offend, we apologize, but it is the theme of the show. Uh, you know, maybe not episode is for everybody. You know, Universal. Studios, they put out films, some are rated PG, PG-13, rated R. This is maybe our R-rated version. I don't know. When, when you, you get New Jack, you know what you're going to get, goddamn. When you went to USWA, I believe it was still 92, and you said that was the year you broke in. So you were relatively green at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it must have made you feel pretty good that it made, you know, a quote-unquote major promotion like USWA, run yeah. by the Jarrett's and Jerry Lawler, wanted you to come in so... I don't know. Yeah, inexperienced, I guess, would be a way to put it. And they put the straps on us. Quick. And then when I went back to North Georgia, they put the straps on me again. So every time I would go to a company, I would get a belt. And I didn't know shit. I ain't know nothing, but I would get a belt. They, they would push me. They would give me a push. Now, what is it that you think promoters liked about you so well? Was it that you're, well, I know in the USWA they didn't like it, but was it that your interview ability was so good? Uh, I, I've never seen really young footage of you prior to ECW wrestling. But what was it, what do you think the promoters like so much? 
You never saw my promos in Smoky Mountain? Just from the clips that were on Doc's side of the ring. So very minimal. Well, that, those did it. Jerry Jarrett came up to me when I went to TNA the first time. Mm -hmm. I, I had just cut a promo. Came out of the ring, went in the back. He said, New Jack, come here. He said, I'm going to say this to you, and I want you to take it for what it's worth. He said, you cannot teach that. I said, teach what? He said, you can't teach charisma. You're either born with it or you don't have it. He said, but you just go out there and cut a promo. And he said, you can't teach that. He said, I don't give a fuck who you listen to. You can't teach it. That meant a lot. Yeah. I mean, look at the career that Jerry Jarrett had, you know. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about when you did some shows for them when they were still, was it the Nashville Fairgrounds? Going way back, or was this Universal Studios then? Oh, this is your first USWA run. Yeah. Way, way, way back in the 90s. Yeah. Oh, I thought when you said, you said TNA a minute ago, so I thought you were I'm sorry. About, That's okay. No, I'm just, I like to try and keep the timeline in order when we can. Uh, well, again, that must, do you have any memories of Jerry Jarrett? What did you think of him as a guy, as a promoter? He was all right. Honest? He was all right. He was all right. Was the pay? He did cut a little nigga joke one time. Oh, did he? Miss Texas was having a match against Jackie Moore. Yeah, okay. against some girl. And him and Lawler was sitting up in the top of the Coliseum. And Lawler, okay, the loser of the match got thrown into a bucket of mud. So they threw Jackie in the mud. And Laura said, look at him like a little nigga dog, a little wet nigga dog. And I was standing there. And I asked Laura, I said, so that's what it's like? And he's like, oh no, Jack, we didn't mean like that. We were just bullshitting this dog. No, that like that didn't happen. I said, it's hard to act like that didn't happen because it did happen. You know what I mean? I said, you said it. We didn't talk no more. Ever? Nope. Let me throw this one at you. Again, I go back to the book of Tony Atlas verbally from what he said on this show. He said that the N-word was almost a form of Connie. Would you agree with that statement or no? Say it again. The N-word was used by people in the locker room, maybe more in his day in the 70s and 80s. It was almost a form of Connie. He said he was referred to by the N-word so much, if someone called out Tony, they didn't even know they were talking to him. Because he allowed it. He fucking allowed it. That's why I said, that's why I don't like that nigga to this day. Because he allowed it. You think if he stood up, and maybe put his foot down about it. You think maybe it would have been a little different? He would have got more respect, and he probably would have got more goddamn he uh, a bigger push. Like I said, they tried this with Mark Henry. Mark Henry wasn't hearing it. And Mark's still getting a pretty nice Legends contract now in 2021. Yeah. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. Respect. Um, and you know what's even funnier? I don't know. You, I'm sure you're familiar with Dick Murdoch. Yeah. He uh, part of the KKK. Yeah. Tony would travel with him. He probably drove. And he said Dick Murdoch would explain to him his views of the KKK, and you know it's really not about blacks. It's about blacks mixing with white kids. And so I guess Tony felt he was getting an education traveling with these KKK members, which I just found to be odd but interesting. One night, we was in uh, Minnesota, I think. I had met this girl at the mall. Drop dead, gorgeous. Mall white. of America, the big one? Yeah. Yeah. Drop dead, gorgeous white girl. So we started talking. And she says, what are you doing here? 
I said, I professional wrestle, and we got a show tonight. She was like, really? I'm like, yeah. She said, can I come? I'll bring my mom. This was the ECW show. I was like, sure. Her not knowing, and because she looked as good as she did, wasn't nobody going to say shit to her about nothing. She came to the side door and walked in, went in the locker room, and got a chair, and sit down. And Tommy Dreamer went up to her and asked her, what was she doing there? She said, I'm waiting on Jerome. Tommy said, New Jack? She said, oh, yeah, that's his stage name. But yeah, I'm waiting on him. Dustin Rose was sitting right there. When I walked in, Dustin Rose said, come here. He said, if Big Murdoch saw that, he would be turn over in his grave. <laughs> I, I said, so what? He said, that white woman come in here looking for you and call you by your real name. He said, he would turn over in his grave. I said, sorry about your look, bro, but it is what it is. That was Dusty's best buddy, Dick Murdoch. Yeah. Yeah. They were like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Minnesota, I'll say this, there are some beautiful women in Minnesota. It is. I remember I got actually stranded by the Cauliflower Rally Club that we mentioned. I went to the reunion in Vegas and had connecting flights. Back-to-back -back weeks, I got stranded there, and I was put, I, they put me at a hotel. Uh, I don't know if it was a Hilton or something like that, but this, I mean, half Italian, I believe half Vietnamese girl at the check-in, both weeks in a row. Oh, my God. I, I was ready to move to Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. There's some beautiful women in the state of Minnesota. but And them white women love black guys. <laughs> oh, they do, bro. It, it, it is known. That is the capital. Really? Of interracial relationships. Minneapolis? Yes. Because it's so rare or why? Because they don't find niggas in that's what I mean. Yeah, it's a rarity. Yeah. It's unique. Yeah. 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 And when we show up, it's like all bits are off. Tony's, I know we mentioned poor Tony again, but he said when he moved to Maine, it was the same thing. There were so few African Americans up there that it was like, uh, you know, the toy that everybody wanted to play yeah. with. <laughs> <laughs> so you got one thing in common with the guy, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but no, just some beautiful women in Minnesota. I don't even know how the hell. We got on that track, but so you and Jerry, I was going to ask you if you had any memories of Jerry Lawler, other than the, what he said about Jackie, he was the, you know, the dog in the mud. Any interactions with him, good or bad, prior to that? I got banned from Twitter <laughs> for leaving a tweet about Lawler <laughs> when he had had that heart attack. Oh, no. <laughs> and I went on Twitter. I said, I hope that motherfucker dies. I said, I fucking hate him. I hope he dies. They shut my Twitter page down. Was it just from that one remark? Yes. Or were there other things you didn't no, like about No, that him? was it. That was it. And they, they left me a little comment about why they did it, but it was because of what I said about Laura. And you know the thing, John Cena Sr., who I mentioned that thinks so highly of you, the one thing he dislikes about me is that I have the same mindset that you do. I think you can be genuinely good to everybody, but once they fuck with you once or you're in a situation like that, why put yourself in the position to be around it again? You yeah. know what I mean? Um, I think that's horrible, and I think it's hysterical at the same time. <laughs> now, what about Jerry Jarrett, though? That was who I originally brought up. Did you like Jerry as a promoter, or was he honest with you? Did he treat you right? He was cool with me. Mm -hmm. Never had a problem with him. Jeff, on the other hand, I didn't like. Now, why is that? We did a show one night. 
when I was the USWA. And just said, Jack, you got tonight off. It was a tag match. Mm -hmm. He said, Mark Freer is going to do the whole match. You just stand on the side of the ring and cheerlead. I said, we're a tag team. He said, I know. He said, but we give you the night off. And Mark did the whole match. I didn't come in one time. I go to ECW. I started using the guitar. Jeff Jarrett all of a sudden started using a fucking guitar. I said, I wonder where that came from. Do you think that Jeff didn't like you? Did he not like the reaction that you were getting from the fans where you were over? What do you think? No, the- I was over and he, he didn't like the fact that I was over. That was the problem. He is in my book. Oh, he really? Put, he puts me over in my book. He put you over? Yeah. You got a quote from him? It's in there. Entry, oh, I, I can't wait to read it. Oh, it's open for a comp, brother. Come on now. <laughs> but no, I really am anxious to read it. So you and Jeff, whatever the issue was back in USWA, and then him kind of hustling your gimmick from ECW, you guys are cool now? If I saw him, I'd speak to him. That's the extent of it. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't give him a glass of water if he was starving. For fucking, if he was dying of thirst, I wouldn't give him a glass of water. But you'd say hello to him at least. Yeah, I'd speak, hey, motherfucker, you want some water? <laughs> oh, my God, this is hysterical. <laughs> but um, was the money as bad as everybody said? In USWA? Yeah. $50 a night. Wow. How many shots a week? Four. Wow, 200 bucks a week? Jesus. Now, how did you survive on $200 a week? I had a Fiero. Remember the little car? Yeah. I was sleeping in my car. Wow. Then, all of a sudden, somebody turned me on to ring rats. <laughs> and I was like, I think I can swing this. So every time I would go out to a bar or go to a club, I was looking for a bitch that had her own apartment. <laughs> I was on it. I was on it, bro. I'm not bullshit. This was your first experience with ring rats was in Tennessee? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and it was like this one chick, we weren't even sleeping together. She was a big wrestling fan. Really? So there was no sex? No. She was a wannabe rat. Yes. But she would let me come to her house take shower, she cook. Did she not want the sex or did you we, not want to give it? I didn't want to fuck her. She oh. didn't want to fuck me. We were just friends. Really? Oh, well, that's we just, nice. We were just friends. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you have a lot of rats down in the USWA territory? No. Really? That wasn't a, was it? It started in Smoky Mountains. Rats? Yeah. Okay. Now, why not in USWA, though? It just, I mean, we would do a show. We would be at the, at the uh, studio Saturday morning. And we'd go somewhere. I don't think how, how the, the, the schedule went. But we'd go somewhere Saturday night. Monday, it was the Coliseum in Memphis. Tuesday, it was Everville, Indiana. Mm-hmm. Wednesday, it was somewhere else. Thursday, then off Friday. Friday was a night off? Yeah. Really? Huh. Yeah. You think that'd be a night they'd want to run a, even a spot show, if nothing else? Yeah. But even for the Colise- Mid-South Coliseum shows, you were only getting 50 bucks? That was it. And see, this was the problem I had. I didn't understand what the draw was. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I was like, I need some money. 
So I don't think who it was told me this. But whoever it was, they was like, get a draw. <coughs> I said, what's the draw? <laughs> he said, they will advance you some money for the night. So I would go and get a draw. Then I would get one every night. So when it came time to get paid, I would get an envelope <laughs> with a receipt in it. <laughs> Here's your receipt for zero dollars. <laughs> I'm like, where's my money? He's like, you <laughs> spent it. <laughs> And I'll say this, to be fair, to show how bad things were in the WWF, 94, 95, even 93, you know, there were a lot of guys that were living off of those draws. The house shows were drawing so yeah. bad. You know, I think you could take two, up to $200 a night for the draw in WWF, and a lot of them would take it, and then the check would be for zero. Yeah. Um, so along the lines of what you're saying, but to try and live on $200 a week, I, I'm sure you haven't come across them, but some of the episodes we did with Marty and the Nasty Boys, when they talk about this one apartment, that one bedroom apartment that the Nasties and the Rockers would share, and then Kurt Henning and Scott Hall would stay there when they'd come to town, mm -hmm. and certainly a lot of activity going on in that apartment, and then right above them was actually uh, Rocky Johnson, his what lovely wife, Otta, very nice lady, and a very young, very young rock who they called Dewey mm -hmm. at the time. So that must have been a very unique apartment complex, to say the least, in Memphis. And Smoky Mountain, Jim Cornette ran the townhouse. So all the boys would come in town, and we would stay there. In one townhouse? Yeah. Now, did you, or, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Now, were you able to find enough rats or enough women that were able to help you seven nights a week have a place to stay in USWA? It varied. <laughs> <laughs> most nights. Hey, most nights. Now, John C., was that two or three, brother? That's two. That was two. All right. All right, wrestling fans, as we continue this fascinating conversation, we're going to take a brief timeout. We'll be back with the hardcore icon himself, Mr. New Jack, after this brief Time out. Tickets are on sale now for our 20th anniversary Back to the 80s and 90s WrestleFest Birthday Bash, Saturday, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. Wrestling fans around the corner around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Here's your chance to own a piece of history from the 2020 WWE Draft. On the second night, October the 12th, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and Alexa Bliss unleashed hell on Andrade and Zelina Vega. This limited edition 11x14 collector's poster is number 26 of only 50 made, personally signed by both The Fiend and Alexa Bliss, direct from friends at WWE. Comes with Certificate of Authenticity hologram on the poster itself, suitable for framing. You'll also receive a bonus autographed mystery photo and an on-air shout-out as our thanks to you. Get this all Ultra rare autograph fiend and Alexa Bliss poster now. Wrestling fans, especially here in the Boston area, we want to thank our great friends at Red Rose for their support for all of our charitable endeavors and programming efforts. Red Rose is two years young and extremely thankful for all the support they've had from our neighbors here in Melrose and beyond for an amazing first two years. Red Rose thanks Melrose and all of the first responders who have fought the good fight and have never given up hope during these unprecedented times. We did it together. Follow Red Rose on Facebook for their anniversary special, facebook.com backslash Red Rose Melrose. You'll be glad you did. Open until 2 a.m. Red Rose will give you fresh, piping hot, mouth-watering food that'll put an ear-to-ear -ear smile on even the toughest critic's face. Check out their full menu online at redrosema.com or give them a call 781-620-1889. Wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Inside is Extreme. Again, we warn you that this show may not be for everybody. There may be some adult themes, some adult language compared to some of our other great talk shows that we have five nights a week. But you know what? Fuck it. That's what this show is all about. It's Fuck them all. Fuck them all, baby. So USWA, I think we were just talking about before we went to the break, 
for the lack of income you were getting, you really needed the help of people to try and have a place to stay. Were there enough where you were going to some of the same cities, the same towns on a weekly? Mm. There were not enough women to go no. around. No. Were there a lot of guys trying to do the same thing that you were, trying to find rats to give them a place to stay for free? Bro, we would sleep anywhere. It, me and Mustafa would go out to clubs. Well, you were with your other partner at this yeah, point. Yeah, right? I, okay. I was with other But then when I went to Mustafa, we would go out to a club. And I'd be like, the mission for tonight is find a bitch with her own apartment or house. Mustafa ain't got no rap. Nothing? No, he just <laughs> fucking... <laughs> I love him to death. But, he but needed you. He ain't got no rap. He needed you. And every time I would meet a girl, he would come with us. Every time. And I can honestly say, we wasn't fucking them all the time. A lot of times, there would be somewhere to stay for the night. So you honestly found just some genuinely nice women sometimes. Yeah. 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 They'd be like, want to go to Waffle House? Hmm. But yeah. Go to Waffle House, go back to the house, look at TV. Go back, look at TV. Stop falling asleep on the couch. I go to the room. And that's how it was. And that was it? Yeah. Nothing sexual? No. But sometimes it was. Sometimes it was. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> My wife will see this, goddammit, and understand some. This was before your time. Mrs. Jack, as we like to say, this happened long before you came into this fine gentleman's <laughs> world. He had a very unique life before he met you, but... Think of how think of the positives that you've put in him now, and you've calmed him down just a little bit to the yes, point you where have, he is, baby. He is a, a kind, loving husband that looks forward to returning to North Carolina to see you when you're done with these great shoots that we're doing this weekend. But you know, you to try and survive, sometimes you had to take one for the team. I'm yeah. sure, even if they weren't the most beautiful. <laughs> one. <laughs> I mean, did you ever have to go real low to try and find a place to stay? I mean. There was a girl I met one time. <laughs> she worked at the chicken shack. The chicken shack. That pretty much should say it all, but I can't wait to hear the rest. She was big. Hefty. Big girl. Everything about her was big. But they still need love. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so I tried to put her off on Mustafa. <laughs> Well, he was bigger than you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we would go by her job at night. She would close. They would close at like 12, or not, 12 o'clock. And she had me these bags of chicken. I mean like grocery bags of chicken. And she'd give me her key. She'd be like, I'd be at the house in about 30 minutes. Yeah, but here's some food. And Mustafa swore I was fucking her. I said, no, I'm not fucking her. I'm telling you. I said, that's why the bitch keep coming to your room. Because I'm trying to put her <laughs> off on your ass. You know what I mean? So we would go and we would stay at her house. And it was like a big game. She would just be like so glad we was there. She would see us on TV the whole nine. And was all, she a wrestling fan? Yeah. Oh, okay. And all her friends would come by and they would meet us and we'd just have a big ass fucking party. With the chicken? Yes. But I did not fuck that woman. Did Mustafa? <laughs> no. no. No one fucked the chicken. No. Woman. Mrs. Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> did she ever try to seduce either one of you? No, she was cool. Oh, really? She was cool? Yeah, okay. she was All cool. Right. She had kids and everything. She, she was cool. She was a big, she was a big girl, though. She's just, just a nice, kind fan that gave you a place to stay and some chicken. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> These are fucking great. These, the fans are going to die when they see this. They're going to be so much fun. Um, so USWA, though, you went in kind of young. We mentioned in 1992, no pun intended with yeah. your last name. 
uh, and you left in 93. It wasn't a heck of a long run. Uh, why was it so short? No, we was in USWA for a month. A month? Oh, okay. I read it wrong, man. We was there a month. Jerry Jarrett told me, he said, I need to put the straps on y'all. Take them off a well done. He said, you're going to be here a month to six weeks. He said, and then we'll probably call you back later on, which they did. Why would they put the belts on you, then send you home? They wanted to get them off a well done. We were new. Nobody knew us. So he was trying to give us a name. You know what I mean? So he wanted to give us a push by putting the straps on us. Mm -hmm. He told me, but he didn't tell Mark. Homeboy. Homeboy. He didn't tell him. So Mark packed up from Indiana and moved to Memphis, thinking we was going to be there for a while. So the week before we left, I told Mark, I said, what you going to do when we're done? He said, what do you mean? I said, when well, I run this up here next week, what are you going to do? He said, what do you mean I run this up? He said, I just moved down here. <laughs> I said, well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I said, but we're done after next week. So he went and talked to Jared. And Jared dogged him. He was like, I don't need you, you motherfucker. You just get the fuck out of this locker room. And oh, really? <laughs> Mar Mar Jerry? <laughs> Jared. 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 <laughs> he said, Mark was like, what the fuck? And he didn't know. His girl left him. He moved, no, he was in Nashville. He wasn't in Indiana. He was in Nashville. His girl left him. They fired him. And then he ended up dying. He died? Yeah. Really? Gee, yeah. talk about heartbreak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it killed him, literally. My yeah. God. Um, so, so that was it. Just that short 92 into 93 run, and then you went back to Atlanta. Yep. What was your best memory of Memphis? Something maybe you didn't mention yet. Was there something that stood out that you really enjoyed? Something you liked? People? An experience on the road traveling? Yeah. I have. I got, I got one to tell you. All right. I had a Fiero. And I had a license plate. Oh, how you get those plates made at the fucking... Yeah, vanity plates, yeah. Yeah, the flea market. I got one that said New Jack. And all the boys would go out to my car when I would show up and sit on the hood of the car, opening legs up where you could see the plate. And would take pictures. I'm thinking this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that they was fucking with me because I was calling myself a pro wrestler. And I had a license plate, a vanity plate that said New Jack. So they thought it was funny? They thought you were a mock? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they would all go and take pictures with this fucking plate. And they'd be like, Jack, where's the car? I said, it's out there. I got to take a picture. And you will see them standing in line waiting to sit on the hood of my car to take a picture. Really? Now, I wonder if people ever did that with Gorilla Monsoon's license plate. His was a jersey plate that said kayfabe on it. So, did it? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know about that, but uh, that's funny. Now, let me ask you this. We talked about positive. A worst experience he had in USWA, other than maybe hearing Jerry Lawler's comment about Jackie Moore. Besides not getting enough money for a draw, no. The rest of it was just... It was a good experience other than the money? Yeah. And some of the fine women that you met in the yeah. Tennessee area? Yeah. yeah. All right, well, 
all in all, would you have gone back if they asked? Probably. Yeah. Did you think where Jarrett and Jerry Lawler were so intertwined with WWF at that point, where Vince McMahon was getting ready to go to trial for the whole steroid distribution thing, did you think you had a chance to maybe go to WWF through them at that point? I never wanted to go. Really? Now, why is that? Because of the politics. It, it, Vince McMahon is a political motherfucker. And I just, I never had the intention on going to WWF. I never wanted to go. Really? How I many knew, people break into the business say that, huh? I knew I wouldn't have lasted two weeks in WWF. Yeah, yeah, you might have had that, yeah. I mm mean, -hmm. so I didn't, I, I didn't want to go. Fast forwarding, my God, over a decade, did you ever get an invite to any of those reunion shows they did? No. No. Vince told Paulie that he was afraid of me. Really? Yeah. Really? He said, New Jack is the devil. I swear to God. How did you find that out? Paul D. told me. Did he? <laughs> he said, New Jack is the devil? He said he is the devil. Because I had went on a couple of TV shows and did interviews with him, about him. About Vince? Yeah. Okay. And I dogged the shit out of him. Okay. You know what I mean? But a lot of people do that. <clears throat> yeah, but I did it. I dug in. And he was like, I would never hire him. He's the devil. How bad was the interview that... It turned him off that much. I mean, look, he has some people under contract right now that have decimated him verbally. What, I did. what did you say that was so bad? Do you remember? It's been so long, I don't remember, but it was bad. Yeah. It was bad. New Jack is the devil. Wow. And I think you really would have added something to those shows. I think the fans would have gone apeshit to see you come out. I think out. so. Oh, yeah, yeah. But we'll get there as time goes on, wrestling fans. Isn't that perfect? We're getting the cue from my good friend John C. Riley. We're wrapping up the show, talking a little USWA, the good, the bad, uh, the, the draws, the checks, the receipts, <laughs> in the pictures with the license plate. For our friend New Jack, I'm Dan Marotti. We'll see you next week on Wrestling Insiders Extreme. Good Peace. night. Thank you for joining us. Please give the video a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel to enjoy more great content. Don't forget, you can help keep wrestling legends working. Check out our eBay store and join the Boston Wrestling family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling so we can produce more in-depth shoot interviews.